Hey everyone, good morning. Thank you guys so much for the patience. Uh, yes, I am officially awake. We watched the Beavis and Butthead episode, and I just gotta say, after watching that teaser and then going to sleep right after, it did leave me with some thoughts that I was eagerly anticipating. What made these guys come to the thoughts of getting vasectomies? Was Beavis actually gonna be getting his ass kicked and that's the whole reason why Bud was training him. I had a lot of theories, a lot of questions, and I just gotta say guys, spoiler alert, everything I wanted out of both of these episodes happened. This might be maybe my favorite episode so far this season. So you guys have all seen the teaser. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into these episodes. So the first episode of episode 8 is the warrior. So basically how this uh, episode starts is that we see Beavis and Butthead, uh, it's lunchtime, they're at school, they're in the cafeteria, and like last episode how they're just like, you know, kicking lockers for no fucking reason, just Beavis and Butthead, you know, there's, don't qu question, don't think too hard about it, they're just kicking lockers. Well, they're in the cafeteria and they're stomping on a bunch of ketchup packets, making it splatter on the fucking wall, and basically what ends up happening is uh, Butthead, one of the ones that he stomps on hits a jock, this giant towering Hulk motherfucker. And Beavis getting the shitty end of the stick like he of course would. Uh, when this jock comes up and confronts Beavis thinking that it was him, Beavis is like, Oh, I'm sorry, sir. But Butthead didn't mean it. Butthead, my dude is across the fucking cafeteria on the other side just going, Kick his ass! And I'm just gonna say... This scene right here, it's weird not hearing the guys get called little bastards or dorks or something. Nah, this jock straight up comes up to Beavis and he's like, you punk ass bitch, I'm gonna kick the crap out of you after school. And I'm like, okay, so this is obviously a different kind of a premise. We haven't seen something quite like this, which I obviously appreciated. I love whenever these revivals center on a plot that we have not seen yet, but just hearing this kind of threatening nature to Beavis, I was like, look, I understand that Beavis is the fucking guinea pig in this show, but goddamn, dude, cut my boy some slack. Yeah, of course Butthead's gonna skip out on Beavis. He's gonna let Beavis take the fall for his... <laughs> it's just kind of like classic Beavis and Butthead. Butthead's all... <laughs> being the coward as usual, acting all tough. <laughs> and, and what I want to say about this, ep I mean, really both of these episodes, but since we're on the subject of this episode, what I want to say is that the comedy, very sharp, very consistent. Both of these episodes were very sharp and consistent with their humor, including their cutaways, which we will talk about. But these, op these episodes also both went down, like I was saying earlier, how it was kind of everything that I expected and everything that I wanted. It goes down the routes that you kind of expect but not in a predictable fashion or maybe in a predictable fashion but one that kind of runs with a joke like they go down routes where you're like I would not be surprised if this happens and then it does happen and it completely takes full advantage of it it completely pulls it off it completely goes all out with that it goes down the routes of what you expect but based off of out out of like what you want as someone who has seen Beavis and Butthead plenty of times before. But let's talk about the cutaway, because it's about the time where the cutaway comes in. Look, I'm not going to give anything away with this cutaway. I'm just going to tell you, just listen to it, get your own interpretation. There was a time where we, where I paused the episode and I was like, Jacob, what are they implying here? <laughs> Jacob's like, oh, I think you know. <laughs> and I'm like, and of course, it's Beavis's experience. It kind of reminded me of like, a recent episode, it might have been the last one, where he's talking about how he met up with, like, uh, some guy that tried to recruit him into, like, the satanic following, and he, like, met up with him in his mom's basement. Kind of like that, but much darker and much more just, oh, Beavis, I'm sorry. I'm not going to give anything away. I don't want to talk about it. I felt very dirty after, but you know what? It's Beavis's experiences, so what can you expect? I remember in the 2011 revival, Beavis said something similar about how a guy at, at his 
like a teacher at his school said to him, "Hey, I want to get some spaghetti with you." <laughs> so I'm Damn just it. like, I know that was a bad revival, but um, it's just kind of, <laughs> you know. But basically, after this cutaway is where we see the whole segment that we were uh, shown in the in the teaser clip, where Beavis basically goes to Butthead for guidance. He's like, "Look, this guy really wants to kick my ass. He's huge. I don't know how to fight." And <clears throat> Why would you go to Butthead for that guidance, whatever? But he basically goes to Butthead, and Butthead's like, I will teach you all I know. I will train you, but it's going to take dedication, and it's going to take understanding. And so basically, he's like, are you ready for your training? And Butthead basically just makes Beavis go buy him a bunch of fucking nachos. <laughs> and during the teaser, I was like, what's the point of this? And it's like, there is no point, but it's taking advantage of Beavis. That's all it is. It's... There's no point to it. It's just Butthead being an asshole as usual to Beavis. There's no point to it. So basically at the end, Beavis actually thinking that he that it was something meaningful. He's like, oh, I see. You're trying to get me into shape by running back and forth. He's like, no, that's not what it is. You clearly haven't learned yet. Go get me more nachos. Goes down this whole thing where basically, yes, Butthead just used Beavis to get him nachos. And then at the end, Butthead actually like seems like he might be getting somewhere with Beavis, so he's like, you need to make sure that you're going to be blocking your face, because that's where the guy's going to aim for, so make sure you put your arms up. Of course, exactly what we predicted in the teaser happens. He gets a fucking foot to the fucking nuts. And what I was really curious about uh, before seeing the episode, when seeing the teaser, I was like, how is this going to wrap up? If it is the premise that I'm thinking it is, where this guy wants to kick Beavis' ass, how is this going to wrap up? Is this going to be the ending? Because I can see that being a classic morbid ending for this revival. So basically what ends up happening is that while they're in the gym, Beavis stumbles upon the gym closet where he finds hockey sticks and helmets, basically barricades himself with shelter and everything. So he's like, look, butthead, now when the guy kicks my ass, I won't be able to feel anything. And all I'm gonna say is that following these guys throughout the day, throughout this journey weirdly enough it felt very story driven it felt like it was it had acts it felt like it was leading up somewhere and again the comedy here it was very sharp the comedy here was very consistent it was everything that i wanted and what i was expecting and it delivered on that in the best way possible all i'm gonna say is that this was basically an episode just showcasing beavis getting the hell beat out of him this episode should have just been called beavis gets abused but, yes, this is one of my favorite episodes so far this season. Can't recommend it enough. Obviously, this one gets a positive review from me. I'm giving it a 10.10. 10. <laughs> 10. 10. Obviously, at the end of this review, I'm going to think about where I'd put it in the rankings. But this is definitely one of the top. I can't really think right off the hand right now. Like, even thinking about some of my favorites, like Old Man Beavis. I really can't think of one that actually tops this one. But yes, guys, uh, let's get into episode two, uh, 8-1 now, Vasectomies. Uh -huh. So this one, we had a lot of theories on. Ever since we got the official trailer for this, it was like, they're obviously getting vasectomies. That has to be it. How did they get these kids? And then after seeing the teaser last night, it was like, what makes them want to get vasectomies? What do they end up doing? If they do, they end up getting vasectomies. There was a lot to theorize. This was the episode that we were really waiting for. So let's just get right into this. So the beginning of this episode actually opens up with them doing community service. And one flaw I have is like, why are they doing community service? <laughs> I would love to know why they're doing community service. It doesn't establish why they get into that, but basically they're at the park, at the public park, picking up trash, where they stumble upon a group of four girlfriends. There's four girls ch ch chilling at the park just joking amongst themselves and they overhear one of them joking yeah and i told roger that if he wants to have sex with me <laughs> he's gonna have to get a vasectomy so obviously this is just all in good fun they're just joking around as friends where beavis and butthead obviously overthinking it being as stupid as they are and going straight to their heads they're like beavis did you hear that if we get vasectomies we'll be able to score <laughs> basically this goes exactly how you have planned they're talking amongst each other and they clearly you can tell that they don't know what a vasectomy is. It's basically just like, what's a vasectomy? Does it matter? This girl said that if we get one, we can score. And I just want to say, I have to talk about the cutaway here. It was one of those things where I was kind of talking about this in the teaser, and then I saw this cutaway and I was like, I see exactly what you're doing, Mike. So in this cutaway, ironically, they're commenting on 
an alpha male video. And in the teaser, I was like, obviously they got butthead in this alpha male light. So they're obviously watching this alpha male on YouTube, giving them tips. And I was just like, I see. I get it now. Oh, uh, yeah, they mentioned something about a gorilla and <laughs> calling him a monkey. I was just going to get to that. <laughs> so basically how it ends up wrapping up is obviously when you think of alpha, you think of like the king of the jungle kind of thing. So they're so they're talking about like alpha males and <laughs> but it's like, yeah, <laughs> this guy thinks he's like the king of the gorillas. He's going to bone a gorilla at the end. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fair enough, actually. <laughs> but after this cutaway, we actually see them now in the doctor's office, and it basically goes exactly how you would expect as far as like comedy and pacing and filler, you know, they're getting like the info, like a, a solid like rundown from the doctor about the operation. He's got this whole like display about like the male anatomy and he's saying, he's talking about like, you know, this is the scrotum, he's talking about sperm and ejaculation. Obviously giving them the like some genuine info <laughs> And Beavis and Butthead are just laughing at all these different words. Uh, again, not really knowing what the fuck they're doing here. And then obviously Beavis is like, so what is a vasectomy again, Butthead? And Butthead's like, uh, it's like an operation on your nads. Obviously not taking it to heart, just kind of like, yeah, it's just something with your nads that makes chicks want you or whatever. <laughs> and like I was saying, like with the pacing and the filler and the comedy, it's that level where it's just what it is. And it's exactly right at place where it should be. Basically how this doctor's like, Showing them this display of like the male anatomy giving a rundown of everything Beavis's only final thoughts or like in conclusion is like Do you have a, like a woman's one of those and the doctor's like I actually do as a matter of fact <laughs> And obviously that's all that Beavis is fixated on in that moment Although what I have to point out is just kind of uh, when the doctor is asked that question. He's just like um yeah, I actually happen to have one. Like, he's all shocked that uh, someone would ask him that. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy works with male I think, anatomy? I think Why just, would he have I think what it comes down to in that case is that it's just, this doctor's just doing his job. That's <laughs> what he's here to do. He's here to fucking tell people about this kind of shit. Obviously, Beavis and Butthead, being adults, you know, he wouldn't think that they're this fucking immature, but they just are. <laughs> so they're just seeing it on two different pages, I think. Basically, after this scene is when we finally see them on the operation tables and we get the whole clip that we were teased with in the teaser. You know, uh, when they're going down uh, under like the operation, they start having these fantasies about what it would actually be like if they had kids. And basically, it goes exactly how you expect. You know, Beavis has got, or Butthead's got these kids that are basically like, Dad, tell us how many women you've scored with again. <laughs> of course, he's this alpha male type who has this 10 out of 10 woman. Beavis has got these kids that are pretty much just saying, yeah, you're cool, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, you can play with our Legos. I will say, like, the Beavis one didn't really pay off. I thought they put a lot more effort into the Butthead one. I'm like, obviously, Butthead's kids are going to be talking about, no matter how young they are, talking about scoring with their father. <laughs> but it's going to be this overly attractive man with this overly attractive woman. Even, like, the payoff of that dream sequence on Butthead's end felt about right. Where Beavis is just... You know, in execution, it felt right. He basically just gets his ass kicked by Butthead, and his kids get their ass kicked by... Butthead's kids after these dream sequence wrap up. They're like, you know what? Maybe it would be cool to have Kids, but it's basically like well, yeah, if they were raised right like we were I mean the world obviously needs more buttheads So the comedy it didn't try very hard, but it that was exactly how it should have been It was exactly aware of what it was. It was exactly at home and at pace with what it was with what it should have been And I just want to say the conclusion of this episode Perfect. So obviously since they were on the operation already, getting ready to get this vasectomy, get these vasectomies, um, and it was at that point where they decided that they don't want it, they basically run out of the doctor's office. The operation has pretty much already started. Their balls are completely numb. So on accident, they, f they end up discovering this. This comes to their surprise. And then they're like, wait a minute. We can just kick each other in the balls and mutilate each other's nutsacks with no consequences. So it goes on this whole thing about they're just basically kicking each other in the nuts repeatedly, getting a little bit more intense with it, and then by the time the episode wraps up, it's basically left you to put the piece together where they're hinting at further shit to do to their balls. And I'm just like, you know what? 
I'd rather not see it. I know exactly what you're get, what you're getting at. I thought this whole ending, I thought this whole episode, both of these episodes were just right at home where they were. I definitely have more flaws with the second episode. There are things that I wish we got, like the nightmare sequences maybe. There was just things in the second episode where I was like, okay, well they could have gone that route. But as an overall episode with its filler and its pacing and its comedy, it was really pretty much right at home where it needed to be. And overall, yeah, I'm feeling a positive review for both of these episodes. I'm going to give this one a 9.9. .9. Yeah, I thought this episode was, like, obviously great for what it was. Not the best to what it could have been, but still just a good episode. But yes, guys, that is going to do it for our review of episode 8. Absolutely banger of an episode. Again, one of my favorites throughout the entire season, to say the least. Guys, it is Thursday at the end of... The day I will be dropping a review of The Boogeyman. Look forward to that. But guys, let us know absolutely your full thoughts of this episode down in the comments below. I cannot wait. I cannot stress enough how badly I can't wait to talk with you guys about this. But yes, guys, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your patience. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And we will see you very soon for more Beavis and Butt as well as my review for The Boogeyman. Take care, guys, and have a great day.